what's going on youtube is donnie b all day as you see in the title i'm bringing you a versus a battle of k bars but one's not called a k bar so this k bar is the becker bk7 this k bar is the more widely known k bar fighting knife most people call it the usmc this is the us army um so what we have here is two fantastic hunks of steel but two very loud knives um this sheath i hate this sheath i love hate um once you strap it in it still makes noise not as bad but it still makes noise however this is what I, what i love i love it's rich leather it's real leather it's good um and the, the leather they use is fine leather but the top layer is really really thin i don't know if you can see right here that's that's how thin the top layer is and uh it's making a weak spot right where the right where the tip is and uh, eventually i have no doubts that eventually it'll pop through especially you can see i use this I wear this, I carry this, I use these knives. Um, so that's the only thing. This sheath is just a nylon thing. This one, while both knives are made in USA, this sheath is made in Mexico. This sheath is made in... Um, and that's about it on the sheaths. I really don't give a shit about getting into those because you don't stab an object, object with a sheath. All right, so... Here we have it. Now, this is gonna look a little worn. It actually almost looks like a recurve, but it's really not. It's just the wearing of the um, the coating here makes it, if I hold it like this, you can see that it's totally flat. If I hold it like this, it looks like a recurve. It's an optical illusion. It's not really curved. Um, let's go over these. So both sport a seven inch blade. Both are 1095 Crovan uh, high carbon steel um they are both um oh they both have the same um edges they both have the same um uh, edge profile they're both done at 20 degrees so edge for edge they should match up the only difference is oh and they're both flat grinds the only difference is this blade is thicker and how they did the flat grind um this one's going to be thicker all the way through this one's not this one has a badass fuller that runs on both sides this one has a quarter serrated on the bottom though um which is okay um this one has no jimping nor does it sport a choil however it does give you a spot to rest your finger which is good this one has jimping on the thumb ramp um, which is good um, but there is no choil and no area of rest you have to rely on your finger sweep right here at the guard eh, it's it is what it is uh, on a blade this big with a cutting edge this big a choil would have been just fine um, they had plenty of room to do that so let's not uh let's not dwell on that <laughs> all right so um let's get into the handles leather wrap plastic crap however this plastic crap is much more comfortable than this leather wrap and why because this is semi round it's more of an oval and the reason they didn't do a complete round the reason they did it oval was to give it better grip however anything round still isn't good this one offers you better grip the problem is it's plastic so you lose in the grip if this was a different material this was linen micarta or or even if they did like a Rocky Mountain tread in there, the grip on this would be great and it would change the overall rating I would give this knife in a heartbeat. Throw a choil, change the uh, texturing of the grip, boom, different freaking knife. And why? Because this thing is awesome. Lanyard hole, no lanyard hole. This has got like a 12 gauge high carbon pommel, good, um, good hammer, but you don't wanna go crazy hammering with this. It's not really what it's made for. Um, it's made for weight, but um, it's just pinned right there. And hammering, you can end up snapping a pin and yada, yada, yada. No good for the knife. Um, 
So this one has a hand guard that goes all the way across. You can see that. It's handy, I guess. This one has just a finger guard, which is handy, definitely. Um, this blade is much fatter than this blade. Overall, we're talking about like 11.84. This one is 12 and three quarter. Um, so here's the deal. Survival knife, fighting knife, right? All the, um, all the traditionalists and all the, uh, the old schoolers are about to piss their pants and be mad at Don B all day. This is a fighting knife. This is a survival knife. This is a much better fighting knife than this. As a fighting knife, this is not very good. Not good. I don't care if it's been implemented by the Marines since the 1940s and blah, blah, blah. It is not a very good fighting knife. Can I fight with it? Hell yeah. Can I use this in battle and get done something that I need to get done? Hell yeah. Would I be able to do it easier with this? Hell yeah. And the reason is this, the weight. It, it, when you swing a fighting knife, it wants to wrap around your hand, right? It wants to come around. This knife does not want to do that because all the weight is here and the front is so light, it's just hard to control when you're coming around. This knife right here, if I was doing the same thing, it's just so easy. The recovery is right there. When I flip this blade, it comes back. It comes back. When I flip this blade, I have to fight it back. I have to fight it back because it gets lost in here. Um, so for all you, oh, this is the greatest fighting knife on the planet ever made. Eh. Um, it's not. It's really not. It's a great knife, however, though. If you package this as a general purpose military knife, great freaking knife. If you package this as a military survival knife, great knife. If you package this as a military hunting knife, a military camp knife, great knife. But to call it a fighting knife and weight it the way it is, no. The, um, the Big Brother, which I'd have the video on, you can go look it up, it has a thicker blade and a longer blade, and the weight distribution there makes it an actual badass fighting knife. The, um, the K-Bar Big Brother, check out my video on it. Oh my gosh, it's awesome. But here we are, we're talking about this one and this one. The weight distribution on this blade is fantastic. Now this is classified as a survival knife, but this is not just a survival knife. It's not just a fighting knife. It's not just a camp knife. It's not just a hunting knife. This is an all round great freaking knife. The BK7 with the hammer on the pommel, and it's a true hammer pommel, not like, not like this. There's no pins in here to break, nothing like that. If you end up loosening these scales, they tighten right up. It's just an Allen wrench. Um, now, are you gonna likely have an Allen wrench in the woods? No. So if you lose them, are you screwed? No. Why? Because it's still full tank construction and you'll still have something to grab onto. One of the best parts about this knife, if the scales fail, you still have a knife. Awesome. Um, so, so here we go. We're gonna get into um, we're gonna get into the edge. We're gonna work it a little bit, and um, we're gonna just see how it feels, knife for knife. Same company, com same steel, same edge profile. So they should, you know, you'd think that the edges should hold up equally well. But remember this: these are um, these are both old in my collection. I've been using them. Let's see. I know that this thing was insanely razor, razor, razor sharp when I when I got it. I haven't tooled the edge at all. I haven't had to yet. And I'm still getting hairs coming off of there. This guy right here, you can see the wear on this blade. You can see how much I've been using it. And uh, let's see. And it's, yeah, it's kind of getting some hairs there. So is it shave sharp? I wouldn't necessarily, uh, can you see it? I wouldn't necessarily call it shave sharp, but it's sharp, sharp, and that's saying something. All right, so let's uh, let's go have some fun. All right, so beginning with the, the fighting knife, whoa, the fighting knife, um, we are going to attempt to breeze through this aluminum can. Let's put it somewhere you can actually see it um, and try not to break this window with the can. I'm gonna move it just a little bit farther. I just want you to be able to see where it is. All right. 
money, money, freaking money. Awesome, awesome edge. Again, 20 degrees um, is just great. Uh, the, the edge profile on these is fantastic. And you notice I didn't swing around. I gave it a quick swing, mainly because there's a window, but uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. These things absolutely are made to cut. Awesome freaking edges. Love them both. All right, so it's been a while since we used the old pallet. So I think uh, I think we should use the old pallet. We're gonna give this thing a, uh, a few whacks and we will see how well it does as a chop air. So right away, I'm getting good bite. Sounds like gunfire. Um, and uh, it's making quick work of this little piece of pallet here. The, uh, it's even breaking it. Um, but it's making a really good hole. And you'll notice how I'm holding this thing. I'm way, way down at the edge. So you see what's happening here is I'm just giving a flick of the wrist. And I'm not diving into the wood. I'm saving my edge while still getting um, a maximum effect on my blow just by flicking the wrist. You don't need to go crazy. When people chop, I see them all day long doing this, doing that. You're going to dull your edge. Angles, angles, angles when you're talking about chopping. That's going to save your edge a little bit um, in the long run. Killed a leaf, man. What did that leaf ever do to us? Don't care. All right, so let's continue. Again, I'm holding it way down. Kind of an okay grip. Modified. And, oh my gosh. This thing, at the same flick of the wrist, the bite it gets is just insane. I'm talking insane, and it doesn't want to leave the wood. It's just in there, and uh, it's just devastating. I mean, you've seen how many swings I took with each of them, right? Let's see, am I in there? Yeah. And, you can see the difference in just those minor swings. Um, this guy is going to give you more bite and take out more chunks than the other guy. But uh, let's keep going. All right, all right, all right. So here we are at everybody's favorite stump. And when I say everybody, I mean me because I'm the only one that uses it. All right, so let's do some, um, some balance. We're going to do some drop tests, see if they rotate, um, see if any vibration loosens the scales. This one, only the pommel would loosen, the leather could shift. But on this knife, no, not so much. All right, gonna drop the BK7. Drops fairly straight, very nice. Drops straight, they actually dropped on the exact same angle, same pitch. So let's try that again. The bite, just on the drop because the BK7 is heavier, was definitely more substantial. But that's a weight thing. And I mean, you can see, I can do that all day. They will continue to fall just like that. Now we're gonna give it a nice little throw. That'll really check the um, scale tightness and the bite. So let's see, the bite, able to pick up a 45, 50 pound stump. <laughs> the asshole who threw it just completely muffed it. All right, so the bite, yeah, maybe it's the wood. I've picked it up before, and just like that, it does it. Now remember, this is a great way to test if these um, if these tips are any good, because when you dive in and then pick up, this is uneven weight, so the weight shifts. So I'm fighting to keep the knife up because the, the stump is pulling it around. If these were weak tips, they would snap in a heartbeat just by picking it up. Um, so what we're gonna do, but they didn't they didn't bend, they're still straight, they're awesome. Um, what we're gonna do is some light prying, um, false edge on a clip point, false edge on a clip point. This one is very thick, this one isn't. So I, I'd be more comfortable prying with this guy than this guy. So I'm not gonna go crazy. Um, you say, well, what could that be good for? Well, if you need to make um, little notches, if you're making traps and things like that, there's. There's little tricks on, on certain things you can make where you need these, uh, these little holes that are kind of shaped like that. And um, that's good, but mainly if, 
if you're out and you are trapped somewhere and you find water and there's mussels or clams or whatever and you need to pry those open um, those can be pretty tough and a cheap knife might snap going through those so uh, prying while it sounds stupid and insequential and this and that and you think well I would never need to use it most people don't most people don't need to pry with a knife um, just the way it is but I know I've used them when um, I've come across people who've locked their keys in their car and I've used a knife to help um, just open a door to get a hanger in there or whatever. Um, and uh, that's all true. So, um, is prying going to be your ultimate necessity? No. But is it good to know that your tip is strong enough to do it? Yes. Now, here's the thing. I could be an asshole and I could jam this thing in there uh, really hard I mean really hard and then pull as hard as I can all the way until it's snapping point just to see what it would take and if you've watched my uh, video on my rant about about this about torture tests you'll know how I feel about that but I'm not gonna do that because I'm not a dick all right so this one I can push in a little farther because it's much thicker same steel same edge um, but this thing is, I mean, it's gonna make some really nice V-holes. Um, and uh, that could be good if I need that for something. Um, is that a common thing? No, it's, it's a very specific type thing uh, that you would need it for. But if you do, you know how to do it. Um, so overall, I, I have to say that as far as slicing and things like that, um, I might give the edge to this just because it's a thinner, a thinner blade. Um, but since they have the same edge profile and it's the same steel, um, I don't know, it's tough. However, this coating is a rough coating. This coating is a smooth coating. Um, anybody knows friction is friction. So when it comes to slicing, I might do better off with this one. But when it comes to chopping, definitely this one when it comes to prying definitely this one when it comes to hammering um, this thing is a beast this guy can without a doubt hammer right and the, and the good thing is it's a nice flat hammer so you're gonna get more um, accuracy and, and more ability to miss your point where this one if you miss what you're striking it's only a little a little thing so basically you're not trying to hammer in attack you're you know you're pushing in something like this if you're using it as a um, if you're using it as a hammer you're gonna do that right so that's where that comes in and you'll notice I'm not touching it I literally hammered a piece of wood into my stump just by just by doing that right um, if I needed to keep going I can do that I can keep going it's gonna work no problem um, the only difference is you want to remember that this is still a pinned pommel. Um, pins aren't the, the biggest pieces of metal. It's just a little pin. So um, out of respect for the maker, I would not go nuts banging on that um, because to break it is useless. If you don't have to, don't. If I need to hammer with this, I can put another piece of wood up there or stone or even just use a stone and then hit it with the spine and I'll get the same job done um, without having to ruin it. All right, since we're already here, let's stay here. Got some vacuum cleaner hose. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get some push right through. Bam, perfect. Let's see, it should be again, no problem. Um, and it is, it's no problem, it cuts right through. So now this, I, I say, would be a better slicer. However, when it comes to pushing through something hard and thick like this and something that's gonna create a lot of drag and resistance, the weight girth of this really, really makes the difference and it makes this the better knife for that. All right, so let's keep going. All right, so keep going, we shall. Let's, uh, let's do a little shaving, all right? So this one, because I have the ability to put my finger on the edge, I'm going to um, utilize that ability and we are going to shave down a little bit, which works very, very nice. Um, 
actually it uh it works really really nice and i'm on a knot right here a big knot so you can see if anybody's ever tried to shave a knot you know what it feels like and this thing is still as you can see here's the knot is still going right through it's just a great piece let's go here so now while it doesn't have a choil or spot to land a finger um my hands are rough enough from doing this so long where i know i can put my finger here and control it to where i pull back against the knot the, the little finger guard here and um, i don't have to worry so much about cutting my finger if you're not used to it i wouldn't recommend doing that now this is a thicker blade so i can tell you right away shaving while it works is nowhere near as good as this um, the fighting knife is a much better shaver when it comes down to harder woods right when it's if it's softer I, I really don't think it would matter however if I need to um, make a, a, a point I can guarantee that's a better knife using the same swing it's gonna take me three times longer to get through the same amount of meat as this one will so as far as that's concerned I'd go here right shaving here um, chopping there so now let's see if we can make a nice little notch right here and with the um, with that 20 degree um, edge profile yeah it's pretty simple um, but there's not a lot of girth in that knife so it wasn't the easiest notch to be made um, I really, really had to dig into it, and um, but, I mean, it worked. There's another notch, and I, I have to say that um, even with the girth and the weight, build, doing the notch like that in a hard piece of wood, um, it's still pretty rough. So um, they ran about equally good doing notches. This thing shaved better. This thing chopped the end better. So... I mean, right there, you're running pretty much equal. Let's go, um, let's go test the spines. All right, so let me set you up there. We're going to test the spines by hitting some of these, um, these dry pine branches. So obviously I'm gonna be going reverse. Now I didn't show you the serrade and didn't shave with the serrade, even though it's a, uh, I'm gonna tell you it's a flat serrade and flat serrades stay sharper longer, best kind. Um, but since this one doesn't have it, it's kind of pointless to compare them. So we didn't do that. But what we are gonna do is just use the spine to, um, I hope you can see that they're actually falling. It's working. Um, you can probably hear the things falling, but let's see if I can get something where you can see it. So let's see. I'm pretty sure you can see that. That is shrinking in size. And um, while I really have to swing at it, it, it's a um, it's a very narrow piece of steel which helps on these smaller guys and I'm at a 90 and I'm on a 90 on this guy which is gonna help to throw spark I'm on a near 90 on this which is not gonna help to throw spark but when you're talking about having a cutting edge this long this little end right here where I'd like to rest my finger I can use to strike spark and I have used it to strike spark there which is perfect. However, it still held up. I didn't burn out the edge, which is pretty good. Um, I've only done it once, so maybe that's why. But using that little piece right there to spark edge, I never use this for anything except put my finger on. So with any luck over time striking fires, maybe that'll naturally dull it and it'll make it even better for me to put my finger on. We'll soon find out. But as for now, I'm going to take this and I'm going to actually go to some thicker parts um, just because it's a big, thick mammoth blade and um, it has a lot of weight and I can trust it and it's just breezing through I know there was sticks all in front of me when we started and there is no longer a bunch of sticks in front of me so now what I'll do is I'm gonna uh, get this guy out of the way I'm gonna use the uh, the army the, the fighting knife first on this big big guy it's a little bit high on the uh, let me try to adjust you guys here without knocking you over all right i think that's better so this is the guy I'm, I'm taking a shot at first and you can see it vibrated knocked a piece off but not where i hit it uh 
and now we'll use this one and just the way you can see i'm not i'm not trying to say oh this one's bad and i'm not under swinging i'm giving them the same swing it's just the fact that the the mass of this guy the weight of this guy it, it, even just using a spine like that bam it's just going to carry more so now this one right here you can see that's thick that's a more than the uh the girth of the actual fighting knife i'm going to try with the the bk7 to see oh man that's on there Bah, three times to chop through there now i'm going to try the fighting knife oh i felt that through my fingers i think i'd be whack i'm putting some serious dents into this thing but i think i would be here all day trying to break that and to show you that it's just not the different piece of wood i'm going to try it with the bk7 Oh, I missed swung it and I'm actually not going through Ugh. well I got a little chunk off of there but I'll tell you what you can see the um, you can see the points where where the uh, where the spines hit and being a thicker spine it just causes more damage being a heavier spine a heavier knife all around is gonna cause more damage so spine for spine better for spark better for hitting um, but I can create spark here. So if it came down to which one would I rather for spark, it doesn't matter to me because that little spot right there is no matter. All right, we have one more test to do. Let's go. I'm gonna press. All right, so our in-flight movie today is these fucking guys. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna toss them. And uh, I have tossed this one a lot. Um, this one, not as much. Um, but we'll see how it goes. I have a, a ton of confidence that I should be able to land this in the first try. Um, and if I was throwing this one first, it would probably go in the first try. But the weight in, in balance is so different. So what I'll do is I'll actually throw this one first. Um, try to figure out if I'm going to go by the handle or, or by, the, uh, by the blade. But I'll throw this one first to see if I can get it. And then throw this one... Um, even though I'm still going to face a, a challenge of weight differential and, you know, complete shape and balance, um, I'm just more comfortable throwing this. So hopefully sticking this, I will then be able to stick this on the very next try. And we're going to go from five yards. BK7. All right. <laughs> well, the one I throw, it hit the tip, but then it just popped out. All right, let's try that again. All right, so that's better. So I had a feeling that throwing them back to back would possibly end in an error, and it did, but that's only because, you know, when you throw one and you sit back there and you feel it, once you throw it, that next one getting ready to go you're still feeling this one um so it, it literally it took me to see where it landed and then i literally backed up a half step and i threw it in the exact same way i threw this one um how do they throw they they both throw really well um this one i would need more practice with obviously um even though i stuck it the first time it wasn't a great stick but this guy right here this throws very well if you're looking for a knife that you can fight with from a distance because you want to chuck it at somebody. I mean something, not somebody. We don't do that. I'm talking like a cougar and not some, you know, 50-year-old chick who's checking out some 20-year-old guy. Um, this this is a really good knife for tossing. Um, so let's bring them to the rack and go over our final thoughts like Jerry Springer. And, and when I press pause, um, it's gonna pause not like that time So here we have it guys the big bad brothers, you know so well. Thanks beastie boys um, I'll tell you what you know between these two knives you have a pretty big uh, a Pretty big decision if this is what you're contemplating on if you're saying, you know, I really want a uh, a seven inch survival knife or camp knife or hunting knife um but, you know, I love the K-Bar company. I love their steel because, you know, they've been around forever. And you know what to expect out of them. It just comes down to 
what one is actually better and um, it's it's hard to put that kind of um, pressure on either one of these it's better than the other because they're both great and I'm, when I say they're both great I mean they're both great not just good not just okay these are great freaking knives however there's there's gonna be a winner today and without a doubt if it comes down to I need this thing to fight off an attacker or an animal if I need this thing to chop wood to baton with have an inchworm on my thumb to um, to uh, you know make a pit with spikes and you know make traps and things like that and just an overall everything doing camping survival hunting knife um, I'm definitely going with the BK7 um, I know there's a lot of traditionalists out there that are saying oh there's no way nothing's better than the K bar fighting knife blah 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 I get it I get it you guys love it um, I love it I'm not gonna I'm not telling you that I don't there's a reason I paid for it um, but when it, it comes down to reality and, and if I want to be realistic that BK7 is just an overall better constructed knife not better constructed steel because they're the exact same not a better constructed edge because they're exact same it's a better constructed knife it's better weighted better distributed better balanced um, it's just a great piece um, does that mean that you would not enjoy owning the uh, k-bar military fighting knife hell no i'll tell you what you buy that thing you're gonna love it forever i mean forever that's a blade you pass down um it's just the significance historically of that blade is something worth keeping all by itself besides the fact that it actually still works like it used to work they're fantastic um still going with the bk7 sorry guys but that's just the way it is. It's a great, great knife. Anyways, I am Donnie B all day and until next knife.